want to thank you for joining us at Cowboy Junction Church today. As you hear this message, we pray that your faith will grow and you'll be both encouraged and challenged. If you enjoy what's happening at Cowboy Junction, it would really help us out if you would subscribe, rate, review, and share this online. You can also help us reach others by partnering with us financially. You can easily give a one-time gift or set up a reoccurring gift at cowboyjunctionchurch.com slash give. We hope you enjoy this message. Okay, Cowboy Junction, here we go. A couple weeks ago, we kicked off a series here at Cowboy Church called Pivotal Prayers. And last week, we had the most incredible Mother's Day message with Candace Payne. She is awesome, and we're going to have her back. But we're going to go back. Remember a couple weeks ago, we talked about the five things that David prayed. And this type of prayer, this pivotal prayer, it was a dangerous prayer. It was a scary prayer. And I got all kinds of cool feedback from it. And I want to let you know, I appreciate that. It helps me kind of know if I'm hitting the mark, if you guys just shoot me a text. And everybody who shot me a text or shot me an email, it was so appreciative. But there were five things that David prayed that challenged our pivotal prayer praying. David turns and said, search me. Remember that one? Then he turned and said, search my heart. Okay. And then he said, reveal any anxiety in me. Everything that takes me away from you. Anything I fear is something that I don't trust you with, is basically what he was saying. Then he prayed the pivotal prayer, a dangerous prayer of, God, see if there's any wickedness in me. But then the fifth one is where we really wrapped it up. We talked about, Father, lead me. And when we begin to follow him, we begin to find that we live a dangerous life. We live a pivotal prayer life. And today, I want to continue this theme on these dangerous, scary prayers. And so, if you would, get your Bible out, okay, and get ready. And we're going to pray real quick. Father, we love you. We pray for today. And I pray through this time of us being through this computer screen and phone screen and whatever the case may be, that you would anoint me to speak life so that we would live a life of faith and courageousness. Lord, we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me, let me show you one of my favorite prayers, okay? It's found in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10. It's simply known as the prayer of Jabez. And this is what it said. And Jabez called on the Lord and say, of, of Israel saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. Now I'm going to go from the, the, the last part. That last sentence said that God heard his prayer and granted him what he requested. And there's some really cool things in this prayer. In fact, many, many years ago, this prayer began to be a part of my prayer life. There was a really small book that came out called The Prayer of Jabez, and everybody bought it. It was a national bestseller. And um, for, the while, for a long while, people were praying the prayer of Jabez. I was one of those people. And the reason why I love this prayer so much is because it was stretching me at the time. Because at the time, I didn't know if I could pray for God to bless me. I didn't know if I could pray for God to use me. I didn't know if I could pray for God to enlarge my territory and cause my life to not cause pain. And so the prayer of Jabez challenged me. I tell you that because it wasn't long until the prayer of Jabez didn't challenge me anymore. It, it, I got to a place to where the prayer of Jabez became a very safe prayer. Now, maybe I tricked you a little bit. Maybe you're thinking, okay, here we go. Stretch me. Come on. I loved it a couple weeks ago so much. I felt like, man, I was stepping out in courageousness and boldness. But when you started off with the prayer of Jabez, I thought, whew, man, huh, that's, uh, that's a prayer I can pray. And that's not good. In fact, it's the wrong kind of dangerous. When we start praying prayers that just feel good and make us think that we can finally breathe and be safe. There's nothing wrong with the prayer of Jabez. In fact, let me just let you know that it says here that God blessed it and God rewarded him and gave him what he prayed for. But if you're like me, these prayers are prayers that I pray to be safe. 
In fact, one of the things we forgot about the prayer of Jabez is the very core of the name Jabez. In fact, did you know, and maybe you need to remember, that Jabez, his name, Hebraic name, actually means to, it, he makes sorrowful. Jabez had a really rough birth. And his mother had such a hard time delivering Jabez. He named, she named him after that experience. And what we forget is Jabez started at a state of sorrow. But his prayer was a prayer of faith that stretched him to not stay where he was, but to take him to the place that he believed God would. And see, Jabez, when he was praying this, was praying a bold prayer. For him, it could be a dangerous prayer, a scary prayer. God, I'm so comfortable with my environment. Stretch me to go beyond where I'm at into what I know you can take me to. But when I pray it, I like to kind of leave out the painful, sorrowful parts. So let's do something today. Let's address that lack of boldness that sometimes we have. Let's address that issue of, I just want to be safe and comfortable. Because honestly, that's something I have fought in my life. I have stepped out in faith so much to only find myself, then turning around and wanting to get comfortable. I battle comfort faith all the time. To be honest, I do. I like things to be safe. I like when I pray for God to protect us and keep us safe. I like for provision to come. I like for there to be smooth sailing. But that's not what this series is about. We're talking about pivotal prayers that sometimes are dangerous and scary. And so I'm going to take you to one. And if you take your Bibles, I would like for you to turn to Acts chapter 4, verse 29. And what we find here is Peter and John are stepping out and doing what they know they need to do. In fact, there's some things you know you need to do. But the very moment that they step out to do what God has called them to do, to tell others about the gospel, the good news of Jesus, everything they've experienced, everything that they've witnessed on their own, just simply tell them the story of the man you walked with, Jesus. They step out and opposition comes and things get scary quick. Let me show you how scary they get. It says that they were in prison And while they were in prison, John and Peter, for preaching the gospel, knew that they would probably be beaten, that they would probably be tortured, and they could possibly die. They turned to God and they prayed this prayer. They said, now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servant that with all boldness... They may speak. They're talking about themselves. God, give us boldness. And from this moment, God began to stir their faith. And fear, though it was there, was not a factor in their faith boldness anymore. And God began to give them courage to do things that they really didn't want to do. Let me keep reading here. It says this. By, by stretching out your hand to heal, that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Today's message is a simple prayer. It's a scary prayer. It's a stretching prayer. Heck, It's a prayer that I'm not comfortable with, but that's the problem. I can get way too comfortable. It's the prayer of, God, make me bold. I've prayed this prayer many times in my life. Uh, One time uh, that I prayed this is when I was asking Heather to move from the friend zone to the relationship zone. And I was scared, and I was nervous. She was totally out of my league, not even in the same atmosphere as me. But her mom told me that I should do it. And even though you've got the mom approval, 
And your dad, my dad is like, dude, you've got to ask her out. I'm still scared. And so then you got to pray. And I remember just praying, God, give me boldness. Give me boldness. Lord, I pray that you make her blind. I pray, pray, pray Lord, you can't, she can't see me. No, I didn't pray that. Just make me bold. And just in the next several days and steps, boldness, that, that's, that's one way. And maybe you roll your eyes at that. But for me, that was a pretty big deal at the time. You know, growing up, I, uh, I prayed prayers of boldness. Um, when I was in high school, um, we had an FCA group. It was a fantastic group. In fact, when I was a sophomore in high school, the seniors at the time had, had run the FCA group up to three, 350 people. It was, it, we needed the entire gymnasium to, to have FCA. But something happened after they graduated and a group of juniors came through and it, it kind of just began to diminish and diminish till we were seniors and we had run the group down to seven people. There was actually a group in our high school that named themselves S-A-F-C-A. So we were F-C-A, Fellowship of Christian Athletes. They were S-A-F-C-A, which meant Students Against the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Uh, that's hard for a senior when you just really want to serve the Lord. But all your friends find it funny to destroy things that are actually good. And so I would go home, and in the evenings I would pray. I would say, God, make me bold. Make me bold. It takes so much faith in our high school right now to invite someone to FCA. But God, make me bold. Make me bold. God, make me bold. Um, I've not seen the, I haven't seen the harvest from those prayers until now, to where almost 30 years later, friends who wouldn't have anything to do with our church group in high school are now calling me and asking for advice and encouragement. These are people who I love very dearly, who went through a, a rebel time back in high school, but now are coming to a place of realizing their dependency and their need upon Jesus. And so sometimes our prayers aren't answered instantly, but sometimes it's a process of, do you want boldness? Then follow me. In my own life, I have asked God to give me boldness. But let me just explain this. While asking God for boldness, he's revealed a few things in my heart. One of the things that God revealed in me as I began to pray for boldness is the inability to recognize that I have not been broken yet of some some things that I was establishing myself on. And so the first thing I want to talk to you today about in being bold and praying bold prayers And being someone who can, in the middle of the trial, stand up and start with, God make me bold, and then God turn back to us and reveal some things. One of the things he may reveal is we need to be broken first. And one of the prayers I have prayed in my life, and it's a a scary prayer, is when you turn and say, God, break me. Break me. The reason I bring this up is because Jesus does something very interesting in considering breaking. And it was his last time to be with the disciples. And as he turned to them, it says in Mark chapter 14, verse 22, and they were eating and Jesus took the bread, blessed it and broke it and gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body. Stop. The body represents everything Jesus did, everything Jesus was, everything Jesus taught. And this bread, this loaf, Jesus picked it up and broke it. Now, the symbolism between it can't necessarily be related to the brokenness that we need to receive, but it is a direct example of the brokenness Jesus was willing to go through in order to obey and walk through one of the scariest things anybody could want to walk through. And this is a moment that we have to stop and look at the brokenness of Jesus to walk in the will of his Father. There's been times I haven't wanted to walk in the will of my Father. You know why? It was just too scary. And I realized there was way too much pride in me. There was way too much planning that had gone ahead I wanted to do this. I had this in mind. This is where I thought I would go. And with all of these things that were almost concrete in my life, 
and I was so confident in, a breaking needed to take place. Now, the word breaking makes everybody nervous. It's like, God, is God going to hurt me? Is God going to crush me? The other day, I called one of the pastor friends of mine, and I said, I'm trying to relate breaking to something. He goes, well, it's very easy. He said, it's, it's a cult. Can you imagine a cult that achieves great success, maybe wins the Kentucky Derby or becomes one of the greatest horses in the PRCA, but can you imagine if that horse had never been willing to walk through the breaking process? Some people call it discipleship. However you define it, it still comes down to, are you willing to ask God, break me? Father, the scariest prayer I can pray, the most boldest prayer I can pray is just simply break me. May there be less of me and more of you. Break me of pride. Break me of my own confidence. Break me, God, of my own sufficiency and taking care of my own needs. Can I tell you guys a real story real quick? One of the things that, that I struggle with is being a people pleaser. I love it when people like me. I love getting texts and emails about how great the message was, how awesome you are. You're the best pastor ever. But ever since I was little, I struggled with lying. It's true. Now, I wasn't like a bold face liar, and I, you know, I wasn't a, 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 a hurt someone liar, but I was a little fibber. And the dangerous thing about this type of lie, not, not a bold face lie, but just the little fibbing lies, is you tell just enough truth to make you feel good about the whole lot of lie you're telling to go with it. I never will forget when God began to speak to me and tell me, I can't take you where I want you to go if you continue to do what you're doing. A little bit of lie is still a little bit of nothing and a whole lot of something I'm trying to do in you. And I began to allow God to break me. And as he broke me, I realized the lying was coming from insecurity. And the insecurity was me not trusting God and allowing him to build me up to be the man he wanted me to be. And God began to break me. Do I still struggle with it? Absolutely. As much as I struggle with insecurity, I still struggle with this inability to just be who God called me to be. But I know how to combat it. And I do it by falling on my knees and turning to God and praying a dangerous prayer. God, break me. And it takes boldness and courage. Another prayer that I've prayed often. God, humble me. Humble me, Father. Humble me. Don't let me be me anymore. May there be less of me. May there be more of you. Recently, a friend of mine called uh, from a church in Texas. This guy's awesome. He, he's such a cool guy. And, and in the process, I had heard that recently a big windstorm hit their church and literally ripped off the entire roof on their church. Now, through a series of accidents... There are 11 founders of this church. And the 11 founders of this church each have a different responsibility. And as my friend began to tell me what had happened in their church, I began to really realize this guy was carrying a lot of heaviness in his heart. So I just listened. And he said, everybody has a role. One guy's in charge of the youth. One guy's in charge of the finances. One guy's in charge of getting bids for construction or possibly insurance. And he said, what we found out after the, the windstorm and our entire roof is gone is we found out that one guy who was in charge of getting the insurance got the insurance, but the guy who was in charge of paying for the insurance kind of got lost in the whole uh, responsibility and didn't know he was the one who was supposed to pay for it. So now you probably can guess the rest of the story, huh? Now they have no roof. And they're realizing they have no insurance. And my friend felt awful. It wasn't even his fault. But he was having thoughts. And he says, is it bad that I 
feel this awful. I feel horrible. I'm angry at people. I'm mad at some, but I'm mostly mad at me for not knowing that the insurance wouldn't pay it up. And I turned to him and I said, hey, I want to let you know something. Every one of us pastors has some kind of story like this. And if you will, if you'll let God break you and humble you, you'll see that he has all of this under control. God didn't bring the windstorm, but God's trying to use this windstorm to humble you so that you would realize one important key. There are some things that are completely out of your control except for your dependency upon God. And when the fastest you can learn how to humble yourself, you will see the righteous hand of your Father come and be the provider that you really would like to be. We had this great conversation, and we began to pray that God would break us and humble us as pastors. And he felt good as we hung up the phone. But sometimes that's how it goes. We sometimes think that when we have kids, they're going to be like this, and they're going to be like this, and we're going to craft them and make them to the young men and women that we want them to be. And if we come into parenthood with that much arrogance, we won't have the humbleness to drop before our Father and say, God, make me brave by humbling me to trust you for these kids. This is a brave prayer. God, humble me. Break me. In fact, let me show you something real quick. Inside this apple is an orchard. It really is. Inside this apple is an entire orchard. And you know where I'm going to go with this, don't you? But we tend to forget everything that this apple is because we only pay attention to what's on the outside. But if you're ready for God to do an orchard in you, not just a provision, not just a satisfaction, not just a pretty thing, we're going to have to start praying some bold prayers. Prayers like, God, humble me. Prayers like, God, break me. And to get to this orchard that's inside this apple There's only two ways to get to it, by rotting or by cutting. That's it. You know people all the time who won't allow God to get down to the orchard in them, but God still has called them to be orchards. They fight things. They struggle with things. Things eat at them to the point to where they finally hit rock bottom, and then they cry out to God, God, I need you. And in humility, at the bottom of where the lowest place of their life, they say, God, I need you. And that's when God can get to the orchard in them. But there's a better way. In fact, I'm careful to say it's the easier way. It's just another way. And you know what it is. For us to get to the orchard, we have to be cut on. And that's what humility looks like. And God cuts a little more. And we find out that the miracle, the great thing about us isn't our skin. And the orchard isn't found in the meat, but it's found in the core. And by us praying dangerous prayers, God, humble me. God, break me. God cuts. And it's not... A hateful cut. It's actually a father's cut. It's precise. It's strategic. And may there be less of us and more of you until we finally get down to the place where the orchard is. The only way we'll ever become the people God wants us to be is when we pray bold scary, dangerous prayers. God, humble me. God, break me. God, through this, make me bold in you. 
And you know that in my life, there's some scary stuff. In fact, let me tell you one of the latest scariest things. Uh, I, I love telling people about Jesus. I really do. I wouldn't be doing what I, I do without a, a love for sharing with somebody. In fact, th- at the end of today's message, I'm going to ask you a question if you'd like to accept Christ as your Savior. And I get excited when someone texts in or calls in. But can I be honest with you? It is so much easier sharing Jesus through a camera and through an audience than it is one-on-one with somebody. Many years ago, I began to pray, God, make me bold in my community. And I got involved in this little group called CrossFit. They're amazing. They're fun. They're nothing like me, but they're family in so many ways. In fact, a lot of them are watching right now. And I realized that this was where God had put me, not to be arrogant, not to come with all the answers, but just to simply be a good friend. But I began to pray, God, make me bold. Let them see my faith. Let them see my failures, but let them also see my trust in you. And God began to tell me something very scary. You need to express and tell them what's happened with you through me. I couldn't imagine. My stomach began to turn. I began to breathe heavy. And it wasn't because of the CrossFit workouts either. It was just because it was, it was scary. But all of a sudden I realized this is an opportunity for God to make me bold. I never will forget when I walked into CrossFit for the very first time and just brought my Bible with me. It's only happened a couple times. And after the workout, I sat on the weights and I opened up my daily devotional. And someone walked over and said, what are you reading? And I said, would you like to hear the word of the day? And I shared with them the word of the day. Some ignored me. Others were really involved. But that was the day that began the process of the phone calls of people late at night calling and saying, hey, Squints, will you pray for me? Hey, Squints, I'm going through a tough time. I really need you to help. What would you suggest? It all started with praying a bold prayer. God, whatever you want to do, I pray I'm the light in a place where sometimes there is no light. And slowly and surely, orchards are beginning to pop up all over the place in this little CrossFit family I have. I'm going to wrap this up. Let me tell you what happened when it came to Peter and John. It says that the high priest rose up, and this is in Acts chapter 5, verse 17. There was a boldness that took place. The Holy Spirit rumbled the community, and they went back out and preached again. They went out and preached so boldly they got arrested again. In the very next chapter, in Acts chapter 5, verse 17, it said, Then the high priest rose up, and all those who were with him, which is uh, the Sadducees, they were filled with indignation and laid their hands on the apostles and threw them into the common uh, prison. But at night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go, stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. In closing, let me tell you about this experience, this boldness moment. Number one, anytime you step out in boldness, there is going to always be an enemy that comes along. But you need to realize It's not your enemy. It's God's enemy. And you have to just accept this comes with being bold. Number two, you see that that very night, an angel of the Lord came. And when we step out in boldness, number two, God always brings miracles. And the angel opened the door and they walked out. And the third thing we see from this bold moment, from a bold prayer, no matter what, boldness always requires faith in God. 
And that's what I'm going to ask you to do this week. This week, would you just simply turn to God and say, God, make me bold. Perhaps there's things in my life that need to die. Perhaps I need to turn and pray, Father, humble me. Or Father, break me. But in breaking me, Father, make me bold. Then we'll begin to find that through the cutting, the orchard begins to be revealed. Will you do something with me real quick? Will you pray with me? And I want you to just close your eyes and right now, I want you to think of the place that you're the scared, you're scared the most. The place, maybe it's raising kids. Perhaps it's business. Perhaps it's finding a job or, or, or hoping that you keep the job you have. Maybe it's sharing your faith. And whatever it is, would you stop? And right now, agree with this prayer. Father, I pray for every one of my friends. And our prayer right now is, make us bold. Make us courageous. Stir us to step out. Give us the words to speak, the love to have, the forgiveness to share. Make us bold bold. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you do me a favor? I've got my cell phone. And I want you to text CJ Next Steps to 97,000. CJ Next Steps, 97,000. And just simply wait for the form to come in. And with that form, check on there. Today I'm taking steps of boldness. Perhaps you are choosing to follow Jesus. And today is your salvation day. Or quite possibly, your rededication day. Whatever it is, we are so thankful that you are joining me and all of us to step out in boldness. To trust our Lord with all of our heart. I love you. Jesus loves you. Don't you ever forget it. You guys have a great week in the Lord. See you later. We all have a next step in our walk with Jesus. To take your next step, text the word CJ Next Steps to the number 97000. We want to follow up with you and pray for you as you take your next steps. Thank you so much for joining us. Next week, we'll continue our series on pivotal prayer. We'll see you then.